YouTube, what's going on? It's Adam here with Retro Repairs and it's time for another quick repair video. Um, what I've got here is one of the original Game Boys. So this is the DMG version, the big old gray one. Um, came out in, I think, 89 maybe? Um, yeah, that's what the board underneath says. So um, we're gonna check this out, see if it works, see what's wrong with it. And uh, I'm gonna do a little mod as well. I'm gonna backlight it and put a uh, bivert chip in. So I'm gonna show you how that all works. So I think before anything, let's, uh, Let's turn it on. So, as you might remember, four AA batteries. I mean, it's no Sega Game Gear, which took six batteries, and I swear they only lasted about 20 minutes or so, but. Okay, so we do have power. When I tested this earlier, it was kind of flaky, but actually seems to be kind of reliable right now. But either way, um, I'm going to show you what I did notice on my first inspection, and that is there was some battery corrosion in the terminals here. So right down there, I don't know if you can really make it out, but it's not too bad, but that will cause uh, some difficulties reading batteries. So we're going to clean that up, open this out, clean it up, um, try and really get it working nicely, and then uh, yeah, it seems to be cooperating now. So let's uh, let's try a game. I got my uh, classic Game Boy uh, Pokemon Red. This was my original one from back in the 90s or 2000s actually. But so let's turn it on. Just for example, I'm going to turn the contrast all the way up. So you got a black screen. You'll note that there's no vertical lines, which is a plus. Um, a lot of times you'll get these. They've got some dead lines of pixels here, and it's repairable. But uh, the screen actually looks to be in reasonable shape. Just, uh, as you might recall, it's not the easiest screen to look at. So we're going to try and fix that. So I think before we go any farther, let's open this up and um, sort this out. So to get into a Game Boy, you're going to need a tri-wing screwdriver. So there are six security screws, well, six tri-wing screws in here. They're not really security screws, but your average screwdriver kit won't have tri-wings. So we're going to take those out. So put those off to the side. Somewhere you're not going to lose them. Now we're going to take apart the shell. So you got to be careful when opening this up because there is a ribbon connector right in here and that connects the screen to the main board here. So all we're going to do is bend it down a little bit, grab this ribbon connector and just pull straight down and that will disconnect it from the main board here. Um, what we're going to need here is to remove any screws holding all this together. So we've got two Phillips screws here holding on this uh, power, a couple Phillips screws holding on this board to the back end. So I'm going to get my Phillips bit and take those guys out. Now this should just lift straight up. That's the power button. Might need some uh, convincing. There we go. There we go. So that is the board. So I'm going to clean up this shell nicely. It's a little dirty on the back. It's not too yellow. So I'm not going to go through a whole like retro bite bright process, but. Uh, we're just going to wash it up. So get some uh, hot water and soap. Let it soak in the in the uh, sink for a while. Scrub it up. Get this looking as good as we can. Okay, so that's that piece of shielding. And we've got a couple, uh, couple little battery terminals which just need to come out. And there we go, that's the back shell. The uh, power button's not too bad, but we're gonna wash it anyways, because why not? Put these terminals off to the side. We are gonna work on those to get them uh, free of any of that battery corrosion left over, but now focus is gonna be on this side. So this is the side with the screen. And again, just gonna remove all the screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, nine screws holding this together. So 
They really didn't want it going anywhere. All right, so we have it up. Um, there was just some adhesive around it actually, which was holding this screen into place, it looks like. So that is now up, so we are good. Um, so I'm gonna take all these pads off, the conductive pads for the D-pad, A and B, and start and select. And put this board off to the side, which has the screen attached to it. And then all of this now is going to go for a uh, bit of a soak. Try and uh, just scrub off as much as we can. I'm even going to put this uh, rusty terminal in there. Just try and disintegrate what we can out of this. This is the lens. I'm not going to clean this because I'm actually going to replace the lens. So, um, But more on that later. So let's go to the sink. All right, so just a uh, sink full of hot soapy water. Just going to toss all the parts in here. Buttons, shells pads, everything in the battery cover, don't forget that. Mix it all up so it's going to soak in there nicely. Top it up with some more hot water. And then uh, you're going to let that soak, maybe about 20 minutes. While that's happening, I'm going to go take a look at the board and we're going to focus on the screen. So now before I go any further, um, what I want to do is show you how I'm going to test this. So ideally, you have a, uh, a power plug for this, which I don't have. So what I've done is tape some batteries up with the battery terminals attached where they need to be. Then I can simply press them to the current battery terminals that are on there. Turn the switch on. We have power and we have a display. So from there, let's, uh, let's remove this display and let's uh, get that backlight installed. So in anticipation of this video, I did a bit of shopping. So I'm gonna show you what it is that I bought. Um, I bought all this stuff from a place called Handheld Legends, which has a whole bunch of uh, display and buttons and stuff for handheld consoles. So pretty cool. Check them out. I've ordered before and they're pretty good. Even shipping into Canada is pretty quick. So um, uh, definitely check it out. So what I got here, backlight for the Game Boy version 3. They've made a few revisions. I got a glass um, lens for the Game Boy instead of the plastic one that comes with it. Um, fortunately, it looks a little bit darker, which I'm not thrilled about, but we'll see once I get it open. Maybe there's some backing on it that's making it look darker. But I ordered the classic gray, so hopefully it lightens up a bit. Razor blade, which you need to take the screen off. New polarizing filter. Um, these are just handy to have, so I figured why not while I was already ordering. Bivert module. So this is the chip that will... Uh, it inverts the colors, and then you use the polarizing filter to invert them back to normal and it just creates a better contrast makes the screen look a lot better uh, this is game gear backlight so maybe a uh, what is this hey, there's a uh, resistor in there cool maybe a uh, hint to a future video perhaps doubles battery life I don't know pretty cool and then a lens for the game gear so again glass lens Gonna be another video in the near future. So I'm gonna put all this stuff back, get the Game Boy stuff on the top, easy to access, and uh, you'll note it didn't include any instructions, so you can actually get those directly off the website from uh, handheldlegends.com. So that's how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go off their right, instructions. So the first step, and probably the trickiest step, is gonna be removing the screen components. So all you need is this first, this front half of the uh, logic board and the screen. So what you need to do is Pry up the display very carefully. You don't want to crack it or anything. So there's a ribbon connector along the side on the right and a ribbon connector at the bottom. So just being very careful about how you're doing this. There's a little piece of adhesive underneath here. You see this white part? So again, just very carefully separate that so that you got a little bit more room to play with. All 
There you go. So that should be about as much as you can pull it out. There are connectors here, and then there are connectors on the side here. So you need to be very careful that you don't damage this ribbon connector. Next thing you want to do is you're going to need to get this back layer of the screen off. So there's a reflector and there's a polarizing film in there. So that's where I'm going to use this blade that I bought. So carefully and try not to cut myself. I'm going to take the cover off. And then holding this down a little bit, you need to secure the screen. I'm going to work my way under the bottom layer here and just slowly get that in enough that I can grab onto the, uh, the film. So I have heard that it's easier, once you get a corner going, to work your way kind of around in a circle. So you need to be careful, especially when you get near the ribbon connector at the bottom there. So once I get going, it actually seems to be coming off not too bad. All right, so that is off. So I'm gonna explain to you very briefly how a screen on the, oh, I've connect, collected a whole bunch of screws on this magnet. Let's uh, get rid of those. So for those of you demanding more Kona, this is my uh, dog just hanging out here. She likes attention, but she uh, is a little camera shy. Where the tail will go. Kona! There you go. She likes to watch, um, she likes to watch her pairs, likes to play with them afterwards, you know, check out, see how they work. So I'm going to give you a bit of a overview on how this works. So this is a little reflector. Since the Game Boy doesn't have a backlight or any type of light source in it, it relies on sunlight coming through the screen, reflecting off this, and then coming back up and creating a picture. There's the screen will actually change the pixels different color, but they won't appear without the polarizing filter, which is should have come off with this. I think it's in here. I hope it's in here. Anyways, um, there's a lot more to it really, but that's just really a high level overview of how it works. So we do need to clean underneath here. There's a little bit of residue left, so all I'm going to do for that, Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol, and that will do wonders. What we're going to do, we're going to peel back the lens a bit, or the glass, Then underneath is going to go this right here, and then on top of it will be the polarizing filter. Now there's a little bit of a protective layer on it, so we're going to peel that back, um, but first we need to really add some power in the ground. So gonna get my soldering iron out. All we're gonna do here, tin up the soldering iron, tin these pads, like so. Then I add the red wire to the positive. and blue wire to the negative. Perfect. So 
So now I'm just going to set this in place. Just like so. And I still have that polarizing film, but I'm going to come back to that a little bit later. Um, next, we need to solder these wires to where they need to go. And usually, I believe it's recommended to use this capacitor here, but I'm just going to verify on the instructions. And that is the case. So um, we are going to this resistor right here. We're going the positive to the positive terminal, negative to the negative terminal. Now, see how much wire they've provided? The instructions recommend putting the wire underneath here and looping it around, and I'm not going to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is run just enough wire to where it needs to be, cut it, strip it, and solder it into place that way. So, And then just solder it into these tabs, or these uh, solder points, sorry. So it's a little bit easier if you have some tweezers hold it where you need it to be. So there's not a lot of solder there. I'm just going to add a bit. There we go. Tuck that up and over, and then same thing for the positive. All right, so now I just want to test this um, backlight to make sure that it's actually going to work properly. So let's uh, hook this up. have everything in the screen yep grab my makeshift battery pack and then power on so there we have a lit up screen but you see there's nothing on the display we just got that little bit of uh, that noise but there's nothing on the display here so that's where the polarizing filter comes in so I'm gonna take the uh, filter Remove the protector on it. There is one on each side. Come on, there we go. And then just gonna put it into place. This might not necessarily be the correct orientation, but we will cross that bridge when we get there. So it needs to go between the glass and in front. So you see how that's opaque? We can't have that. So let's turn this this way. It gets a little bit, a little bit yellow almost. So that's probably, that might be okay. Let's give it a test and see. There we go. So that is the correct orientation. So let's align it a little bit better. Okay, so we've got that in, so let's give this a test again. There we go, that looks all right. So um, let's grab the shell bits and just give an example of how this is gonna look. Okay, so I've just quickly kind of thrown it back into the case here, which is clean, just to give an idea of how this is gonna look now with the backlight. So I'm gonna throw in Pokemon, throw in my four AA batteries. And then let's power it on. So 
truth be told, it's a little washed out. But definitely usable, but we're not done here. So I still want to install what's called a bivert mod, and that's going to really enhance the clarity of this. So um, let's just jump right into that, I think. Okay, so we're going to do the uh, bivert mod right now. And this is, again, not overly complex, but it can be a little more difficult than the previous mod because it involves lifting up some pins from this... Uh, this uh, display connector. So this is the chip itself, and it's designed to fit right on top of the board here, I think. Goes on the sixth and seventh pins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just like that. So what you do have to do is do a little bit of trimming on the board. So I'm gonna grab my, my flush cutters and just gonna cut off as much um, pin as you can right here on this guy, as it may interfere with the board sitting neatly. There we go. Okay, so I've given the board a general clean here. So I need to find pin six and seven from the top. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So the pin right beside this uh, contact there. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So let's put some flux on that. Gonna get some fresh desoldering braid. Put some flux on the solder desoldering braid. Grab my soldering iron and line it up neatly right over top of six and seven. So that should be these two right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yep. And then just apply some heat and it should wick a bunch of that solder up. Now, they probably aren't going to lift right away. So you may need some help of either some very fine tweezers or a utility knife or something of the type. Okay, so that's pin number six is up. Let's see if pin seven comes just as nicely. Not quite. So if they're not cooperating right away, you can just add some heat and try and gently pry it up. Those are them, so let's straighten those out a little bit. We're going to lift them all the way up just so I can get under and clean that whole area. All right, I'm just going to come in with some alcohol. that whole area clean. Now we line up this chip just like so. The holes on this board should line up with those three points right there. Let's see if we can zoom in and really see this. Okay so you see there's three holes in this board. Line this up just like that. Line up the holes right there. Then I'm going to come in with some more solder and just fill those holes up. So that moved a little. Oops. Going to add a bit more solder to those points, I think.
All right, so there are a couple um, a couple more parts we need to solder into place here. So next step is going to be these two pads right here. I'm going to put a little bit of flux on them and then tin them. And then we have to solder the pins that I had previously pulled up onto these pads. So I'm going to bend them down a little bit. Just like so. Put a little more flux on them. And then just going to push them into place using the soldering iron. Maybe you can help it with your tweezers if they keep trying to come up. So there's one. And then number two, line up the pin. Two, there we go. So we're not quite done yet. Last thing is going to be a ground wire. So once again, I'm going to tin this ground pad right here. And I'm just going to connect it to this grounding point right here where the, um, the link cable is supposed to connect to. And this just grounds the whole port. So let's add some fresh solder onto that. Clean off my tip a bit. And then I'm going to start with one side. I'm actually going to trim this because see how much lead there is there? That's really way too much. I don't need nearly that much. I'm going to go with about half of that. Now these wires are already pre-tinned, so um, you don't really even need to tin the wire. You can if you really like to, but... And then just like the other ones I did, I'm going to trim this wire a bit. So I'm going to cut it off right about here. I'm going to come in with my wire strippers. And there we go, so that should be good. Um, so I'm gonna put this back into the shell and let's uh, test it out. Okay, so power on. And so you notice here that the screen is now dark and everything that was black is light. So what's happened is it's inverted the colors on the screen, which is how it's supposed to be. So, but you notice it's a lot better contrast than it has. Now we can fix that and I'm gonna show you how right now. It's pretty easy actually. Oops, completely off. Okay, should be able to see that. So let's turn it on. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do here. So grabbing my tweezers, let's turn the volume down. Oops, that was contrast, volume's on here. So I'm gonna lift the screen up again. And then that, where is it, right here. So that uh, polarizing filter that we had, 
Gonna just rotate it 90 degrees and you'll see now that we can actually see what's on the screen and it's giving it kind of a bit of a blue tinge. Just gonna rotate it back again, see what it looks like and that's inverted again. So we're gonna go with that. It shouldn't make a difference if it's upside down. No, same thing. So I'm gonna line this up. And that is the biverted and backlit screen. So it is significantly better to look at. Um, you can actually kind of make out some of the gray, gray, or gray scales sorry, on this. Um, just a lot better contrast than without the bivert mod or the backlight for that matter. So let's, uh, let's get this put back together. Um, we'll put the new lens on and see how it looks at the end of this. So reassembly should be pretty straightforward. Um, first I'm going to take everything out of this and we'll start from scratch. So we need to put back that uh, piece of metal shielding. So that's going to be this guy right here. And I believe that goes in place like that. Nope, not like that. this not like that how the heck was that in there oh like that there we go so just like so and that's providing some shielding um, for the cartridge slot and then there's just four screws that hold that into place All right, so that part's ready. I'm gonna give this a little bit of a clean just with some alcohol and a toothbrush. Just wanna rub up any of the uh, leftover flux that's might be on the board here. Flux is a corrosive uh, chemical, so it will continue to, I mean, it probably won't do much, but it could continue to promote corrosion on here. So we just wanna try and clean it up wherever we can. And then I'm gonna stick this in place. So this little board here it's going to go right like so along the side. You want to make sure that these wires here are just tucked out of the way. Line up the, there we go, those uh, battery terminals so they should go through the hole. Um, grab the on off switch. So you're going to want to make sure that you have this the little nub here on the on off switch at the top. It's going to go on the side where the cartridge slot is. So I'm going to put that right over the power switch and then should sit nicely just like so. So you can flip it on and off. And this guy here is your AC jack and that sits right there and gets screwed on. So let's put that on. Okay, 
So there are no, I don't think there's any screws that hold this board into place. It's just sitting there. Um, the case screws will come through on the other side. So for this side, now what we need to do is I'm going to wipe the screen a little bit first, just with some alcohol and a paper towel. Just want to get any fingerprints or other smudges off. Actually, Okay, so that's clean. Then we've got two more screws that hold this into place, this ribbon connector here. So those need to go down. And those are those really small Phillips screws that we took out previously. I wanna make sure you don't drop these because you probably will never get them back. And just make sure when you're screwing those down that these wires are out of the way. Um, otherwise, yeah, that looks fine. Just one bit of a clean on the screen here. There we go, that should be good. All right, so now for the top part of it, we're gonna reassemble our buttons first. So um, start and select, gonna go into place there. Gonna get our pads and our A and B button. There's A, B, and where's my D-pad? There's my D-pad. All right, so now I'm just gonna line up the speaker here and then just push the rest of this down into place and it should sit really nicely, just like that. So now there are 10 screws to put together. Should be the rest of your non-tri-wing screws. So basically all of these holes except for, except for which one? Maybe that one, uh, except for this one here. No screw goes in there. 
but all of the other ones are going to have a screw installed. Okay, so I think we are all good. Just making sure there's no screw holes I've missed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's it. So let's uh, now put this side, attach this ribbon connector again. lost the power. So now this should just kind of snap together nicely hopefully doesn't really snap it just kind of sits together just like so give it a push make sure the buttons feel good seams are even power switch on power switch off good so now let's uh, put a couple of these in I'm gonna do probably three and then we'll test it Okay, good. So Oops. And where is my battery cover? There it is. Oh no. Got some fluff stuck in there. Oh, whatever. Oh, let's get some volume. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. And I must say, the color looks, or not, almost kind of looks like colored. You can almost sort of see a reddish hue and then the rest a little more blue. It's probably just my mind kind of making up things, but I think it looks so much better. So, um, last thing to do is going to be the new screen or the new uh, lens. So, what I want to do is clean up the glue bits that's on here right now. So I'm just gonna use some alcohol and just kind of work away at this. Try and get as much of this up as we can. Okay, so using some alcohol and a Q-tip and this razor, um, I got as much of the old um, adhesive off as I possibly could. So let's put this new screen lens on. So again, you're want to, gonna wanna take a moment to, oops, there's a fluff there. Try and lift up as much dust and fingerprints or whatever you can off of there before you install this because it's just going to be a pain to get, remove it later. So I'm going to take the backing off. And this has adhesive already installed, so I really don't need to do anything to that. There we go. and just give it a good solid push down. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Just gonna give it a bit of a wipe down and get some of my fingerprint smudges off. Seems I wiped something on it. Anyways, let's uh, throw the battery in now and let's give it a final good test. So, it looks pretty good, I must say. So I'm noticing on camera, it looks like you're seeing some light bleeding at the bottom. You can see it a little bit, but it's not too, too bad. Um, an interesting add-on to this mod might be adding a little potentiometer, kind of like this volume, and um, simply having a dimmer, basically, so you can dim the brightness of the backlight, but um, I don't know, maybe that's a job for another day, but I think uh, otherwise, this is uh, pretty much good to go, so um, it's pretty actually good looking Game Boy, it's in not bad shape at all, a little bit of scuffs in that, but nothing major. Um, yeah, I think this is, uh, it looks good. So hopefully uh, you stuck with me for this video. Quite a few things to kind of go through here, but uh, overall, definitely a mod I think I recommend it to do. All of this stuff, uh, the backlight I think was 10 bucks. The polarizing filter comes with it. The uh, new lens was I think about $8 or so. So I don't know, you're looking at maybe 20 bucks in parts to do this type of mod. The chip, the Bivert chip was next to nothing. I think it was $2 or $3. So definitely worth it if uh, you want to check this out, try and uh, mod your own Game Boy. So that's going to be it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. Um, hope you learned something from this and uh, are able to kind of do this on your own. Um, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video if you haven't already. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks a lot and we'll see you next video.